Oh, I'm saying like for this part of the. Hello. Yeah, but still. Ah, no, stop. 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 All right, so this is office hours for the next uh, half hour or so, 25 minutes. Here to answer any questions about moving this course online, chapter eight, chapter nine. Wait, so is this mandatory or if we have no questions, can we leave? So this is just like a normal office hours. It's not mandatory. If you guys don't have any questions, nope. You are free to attend these office hours if you have questions or not. If there are good questions that students ask, I will post these Zoom office hours to YouTube, probably edit them so I'm just showing the relevant parts of any office hours. So like if I post this to office hours, I'm probably not gonna include this, just any kind of problems I solve or things like that. And I won't be offended if you want to hang out with me online for the next half hour. You've got other things to do. <laughs> uh, not really, but. <laughs> I can say that this was the worst spring break ever. <laughs> can concur. So, yeah, like I said, I'm here just to answer any questions on anything about Physics 4A or moving this course online. Um, these office hours aren't mandatory, so if you don't have anything to ask, you don't have to attend. But yeah, I'm here basically specifically for 4A. Okay, my cat trying to play with my notes, and I'm going to go wrangle her. See ya. <laughs> All right, Laura, take care. So Adrian, Constanza, Christopher, any questions you guys have? I was kind of just hoping other people would have questions, but. No, that's fine. And like I said, I will post these uh, to YouTube. So if at any point you can attend, you can always check out the replay. Adrian, ooh, you got your hand raised. What's up? Uh, I just had a question. I took the chapter eight homework and the program automatically gave me a grade and you'd mentioned that the homework's going to be based on completeness. Will you be overwriting the program's final grade? I will. So I'm not using the mastering physics, uh, the scores for anything specific except for the quizzes. So for the homework ones, I'm just going to see who did it. And if you attempted everything, then you'll get full credit. The quiz grades, those will count, but the homework grades, don't worry about those. Cool. So yeah, I mean, like you should be able to get most of the problems, but you know, sometimes if you request a hint or you want the answer, then it doesn't give you credit for that particular question. That said, I mean, if there's nine homework questions and you request the answer for six or seven of them, I wouldn't get full credit. But as long as you're, you know, giving a good effort, then yeah, my goal is to have it be just like it was before. Okay, gotcha. And you know, the homework problems, the homework solutions are still listed online. I mean, so you still have those to sort of refer to. It's just the final answers are going to be different because the software is going to randomize the variables. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Yes, indeed. Thank you. You are welcome. Uh, other questions anybody has? Just recorded. Good. Safe meeting chat. If there's no questions, what I don't really have anything prepared. How about anything from chapter eight, chapter nine? All I've done for chapter nine so far is scalar product or dot product. But tomorrow I'm going to start looking at energy and work and kinetic energy. Yeah, so the um, the dot product, the, the way you were explaining it made it, s 
I, I, I kind of made it sound like it was like not communicative. Could you like explain why it is communicative? Communicative. So, meaning, why does a dot b equal b dot a? Yeah. Let's do a whiteboard share. Or I mean, like I I, I know what like the uh, answer using the using like the actual like dot product would be, but using the what what was it called the interpret the like how much of A is in the direction of B and yeah. so on. Yeah. Uh. We think so. One, just to be clear, so that let me get rid of this. Ah, that's supposed to be an eraser. Oh, <laughs> now you've just got a neat squiggly line on the. <laughs> All right, I'm still getting used to this. So I don't want eraser. I want draw. So the dot product, just a little review of any two vectors, is always the magnitude of the first vector times the magnitude of the second vector times the cosine of the angle between them. And you could use theta or phi. From this definition, you can also show that the second way of getting the dot product is the x components multiplied together plus the y components multiplied together plus the z components multiplied together. So one, just from this definition, you could see that a dot b is going to give me the same thing as b dot a. So in terms of talking about what it represents, so if this is vector a and this is vector b, let me switch here to a different form color. And let's say this is the angle alpha. So if I were to, you know, make X and Y components of B, this little component right here would be the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle. And this component right here would be the magnitude of B times the sine of the angle. So B, where am I at? Ah. B times the cosine of the angle is this little piece right here. It's how much of B points in the direction of A. So now let's see if we can reverse that. Jordan, is that a question? You guys do it. No, I'm gonna not. Can you see us? I'm gonna mute that. <laughs> okay. So let me do this same one. Can I move this up or down? No. Uh, let's try it over here. So if I have A is to the right here, B, kind of had it before. Ugh, I hate trying to do this on this. Ah, erase. How do I get more whiteboard? Oh. What did that just do? Ah, oh, that gave me a second whiteboard. All right, let me try it over here. Draw format there. So let's draw vector A, that's eraser. Christopher got three. Christopher, question. Yeah, there, there, might be a, there might be a button somewhere that just lets you undo the last thing you wrote instead of having to select the eraser and everything. Ah, you mean this button that says undo? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> what is it? Why do they make it so hard to find? All right. So, <laughs> so if this is A and this is vector B, then B dot A would be the magnitude of B times the magnitude of A times the cosine of the angle between the two. So one, obviously the magnitudes don't change, the angle between them doesn't change, so you can show that way that A dot B is B dot A. But if I wanted to do, let me change this color, A cosine of alpha, oh my God. <laughs> 
What are you doing in my office hours? <laughs> all right, I'm working here, all right? Just let me do my job. <laughs> okay, so A, now I lost my train of thought. A times the cosine of alpha is how much of A points in the direction of, sorry, of B. So this right here would be A times cosine of alpha. So I don't know that this is an easy way of showing it, but this A cosine alpha times B is gonna give me the same as B cosine alpha times, oops, get rid of this. Oh, watch this, I gotta redo, undo, undo. Oh, I can undo them all. Okay, redo. Oh, there we go. Undo. Okay, so this right here is A times cosine of alpha. So if I take that and multiply it by B, I'm going to get the same answer as if I took A and multiplied it by B times cosine of alpha. That's not very easy to see, but it's easier to see just from the math that since I'm only doing the magnitude of one, times the magnitude of the other, times the cosine of the angle between, that gives me the same answer anyway. So let me stop this share, go back to this. Okay, uh, other questions I can answer about anything. <laughs> hey Joe, can you hear me? I can. Okay, so I just had a quick question in the homework Wait, again, so I think I... Who's SR? Steven. Oh, hey, Steven. Yeah, so I just had a quick question about the homework. Uh, yes. I think you already mentioned it in lecture, and I think I can. I got the gist now. So we're just submitting the answers manually versus uploading them. Right. Uh, rather than have people take pictures of, you know, seven pages of problems and me trying to grade it, you're just uploading the answers manually. Okay, cool. That's fine. Uh, you guys are having a party over there at Jordan's place. <laughs> Is this the massive house that everybody's in? Wait, let me see if I can unmute you. Oh, wait, I'm gonna take them over here. Okay. Let's all like show them the mountains. Hi, Joe. <laughs> Joe, we're in Tahoe. You're in Tahoe. Yeah. <laughs> Aliyah and I just back from Hawaii. Excellent. Hello. Yes. I'm glad somebody's having fun. How was Mexico? Uh, don't even talk to me about Mexico. I didn't go to Mexico. Did you go? No, of course not. Oh. They were sorry. still debating it, but then they closed the borders the day before we were supposed to leave. And oh. yeah, so I spent my uh, my spring break at home. Oh, that's kind of a bummer. Yeah. Well, so. you'll, you'll get your Mexico time in someday. I will. I will. It'll happen, Joe. We'll, right. we'll throw a fiesta here for you. Yeah. All right. I'm muting you and getting back to my office hours. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Other questions that anyone here has about uh, Physics 10, Physics in general, Chapter 8, Chapter 9? Uh, I have a question about the readings. Yes. Are the readings given through uh, the the master of physics the same as the ones from the book? Uh, what do you mean the same from the ones from the book? Because I've been looking at them and it seems they are similar, but they're not exactly the same. You mean the textbook that you have is not the same as the readings online? No, I think my question is, are they, do they explain the same thing in the same way? Yeah, I mean, the readings are one that's just there for you to make sure you're staying on top of the material. So those scheduled readings, I'm not grading, I'm not using that as class participation. It's just as a check for you to make sure that you're sort of following along. Because one of my concerns is that it's easy if we're not meeting live, to get behind. So I'm trying to make sure that I'm setting it up so that people stay on top of the material. So okay. I don't know exactly if every page corresponds to the pages, but 
yes, the material is the same, so it's just there. And what I recommend is people read through that before I lecture on the material as much as possible. All right, thank you. You are welcome. What's up, Christopher? And then you have like a list of everything that's due this week, right? Just... Yeah, I just uh, I emailed that out. Okay. And what I'll probably do is I'm gonna change the I'm gonna edit the web page, the online resources page, and just have a like what's due this week and next week kind of thing. Yeah. And my goal is to continue to make that edit that page. Like right after I'm done this, I'm gonna upload everything to YouTube, and then I'll put the links on that page for lab seven and the office hours and the lecture and things like that uh, yeah and then i guess five or four b definitely isn't happening then or uh there are no physics for or there's no physics classes online this summer so we're not doing physics 4b definitely and we're not doing physics 10. Mm -hmm. and all summer classes are going to be moved online but from what i understand they're going to be not offering the same kind of classes they did before. So things will be a little challenging. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not ideal, but yeah, that's, and I can't even imagine trying to teach a physics 4B class online. Like I don't even know how you're gonna do the labs and stuff like that if it is still online in the fall, which I don't think it will be. But I would pretty much count on we're not going back until May 5th at the earliest, but it's looking like we're not going back at all. Yeah. My hope is that maybe they'd let us come back and do finals live because I can't imagine how, yeah, I'm not even thinking about the finals yet, but I'm not quite sure how that would work if we're trying to do it all online. Yeah, I mean, even if they don't have it under control in the fall i don't really um I, I can't imagine that they'll uh everybody will still have enough money to keep this up by then yeah it's uh well it's unprecedented time so nobody uh, nobody my age has ever gone through this or actually anybody alive so yeah be patient stay kind to your instructors and yourself and just yeah take it a day at a time and I guess there's probably still like a few people alive from the Spanish flu. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe. Yeah, probably. Probably that was that was what early 1900s. Uh, 1918, I think. 1918. Yeah, we probably got a couple people still alive. All right. So, any more uh, physics questions or anything like that? If not, then I'll probably just stop this just so I'm not posting long videos without any content to YouTube. Anything else? Any other questions? Going once, going twice. First day of online lecture. I have a question. You got a question? Yeah. Um, so for the motorcyclist problem, the one where he's trying to jump over the crocodiles? Yes. Um, um, I don't exactly get it, get it. I know it's gonna be a two part problem, but something is off of my calculations. I got right, it me, a couple of- Let me see of if I can easily, let's see the easy way to pull up this homework. End of chapter. This is for chapter eight? Yes. And remind me which, uh, Eight Which thirty-five. Eight thirty-five. All right. So let me share this homework problems. Share. All right. Can everybody see the homework problem? Yeah. All right. So this. Let me annotate. Draw. So question thirty-five. Motorcycle Daredevil plans to ride up a two meter high, 20 degree ramp, sail across a 10 meter wide pool filled with hungry crocodiles and land at the ground at the other side. Fortunately, he's going up and the rolling friction is not negligible. Justify your answers. Okay. 
Wait, this is, fortunately the motorcycle dies. Does he survive? Why is this in chapter eight? It's not really circular. Okay. As many times as you push it around. Okay, let me new share whiteboard. Share. Clear all drawings. So let me read this from a two meter high, 20 degree ramp. So the setup is you basically have a ramp which is two meters high. You have a 20 degree ramp, so the angle is 20 degrees, and sailing across a 10 meter wide pond of alligators. And you're told that. Okay, so just as he's starting up the ramp, his speed is 11 meters per second. Yeah. In essence, what you need to know is what is the speed that he's leaving the ramp at. And then it's just going to become a projectile motion problem where whatever that speed is, something is being launched at a two meter height at a 20 degree angle and the speed you have to figure out from the first part. And this is basically Newton's second law. So if I look, if I look at the forces acting on this guy, you've got the normal force, which is perpendicular. You've got gravity MG, which is straight down. And we've got in this case, friction, which is just going to be rolling friction. And so then you're gonna to need to break the weight up into a component opposite the normal force, a component down the incline. So actually just looking at this, if I redraw the free body diagram, what I have is the normal force, mg cosine the angle, mg sine of the angle, and then I've got rolling friction. So what you can do is you can figure out what the acceleration is down the incline. It's not G sine theta because there is friction. So you have to take that into account. Once you figure out what the acceleration is, then it just becomes a one dimensional motion problem where something starts off. I could say V naught X is 11 meters per second. V X is what we're looking for. A X is basically the acceleration that you get from some of the forces equals ma. So you need to figure out what this acceleration is. And then delta x is basically how far along the incline, how far along the ramp you're traveling. So my delta x is going to be this distance here that you're just going to need to get from trigonometry. Mm -hmm. You have the height is two meters. You have the angle so you can figure out how far along the incline he's moving. So he starts at 11 meters per second. He moves some distance along the incline and the acceleration you're calculating from Newton's second law. So this is actually a three-step problem. The first step is you're using the sum of the forces equals ma to get what the acceleration is. Second step, you're figuring out what is the speed just as he's leaving the ramp. And then the third step, you're basically using projectile motion to figure out how far away he lands. And just keep in mind, here's a case where you're starting from a different height than you're ending from. So you're gonna to need to use a quadratic equation to figure out the total time in the air before he hits the ground. Does, never, that, uh, does that help it a, a bit? Yes, but um, I never really quite understood how the quadratic works exactly in cases like this? How the quadratic equation works. Well, how to, I guess, how it is applied in a sense, I guess. So like for this case, so my, one of the equations that we have for projectile motion is y equals y naught plus b naught y t plus one half a y t squared. 
Remember that equation? Yeah. So if I rewrite this as one half a y t squared plus v naught y t plus y naught minus y equals zero, then this is just in the form of a quadratic equation where I have a t squared plus b t plus c equals zero. In this okay. case, my a is going to be one half the acceleration in the y direction, which would be negative 4.9 meters per second squared, because a y is negative 9.8. My b is going to be whatever v naught y is, and you're going to have to figure that out. And then your c is going to be y naught minus y. So like for this particular case, something was being launched from an initial height of two meters. So, my, oh, sorry, that shouldn't be y. It should be y naught minus y. Oops, let me get the eraser for a second. Eraser. So this was y naught draw minus y. So it's being launched at some speed that you need to figure out at a 20 degree angle. So like your V naught Y is gonna be the V naught sine of 20 degrees, where V naught is the speed it has just as it's leaving the ramp and that's what you'll need to figure out. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a quadratic equation that you're gonna solve for T. That'll tell you how long it's in the air until it hits the ground and then you can use x equals x naught plus v naught xt to figure out how far away it lands. t will be the time that you get from the quadratic equation, and then v naught x will be the initial velocity in the x direction as it's leaving the ramp. Okay. Um, All right. I use a different equation for it, and maybe that's why I got it wrong. I used um, v y squared equals v naught y squared plus 2ay why but you don't know what the y velocity is going to be right as it's hitting the ground oh um, okay oh so I, wait so one i mean so wait you could if you wanted to not use the quadratic equation you could use that equation to figure out what v y is right before it hits the ground and then you could use a different equation to get the time okay so you could use this equation, v, v so like y squared one. equals v naught y squared plus 2ay y minus y naught. You could use that to figure out what is v y right before it hits the ground. And then you could use v y equals v naught y plus a y t to figure out how long it takes until it reaches that velocity, which will oh. basically be how long it takes before it hits the ground. Okay. All right. I need to uh, I need to stop this, and uh, I will post this online. But I need to eat some food, and I have office hours for another class in about twenty minutes. All right then. All right. Uh, yeah. So I will uh, be online tomorrow doing another lecture, and uh, yeah, I'm always in contact by email. The lectures are always going to be uploaded to YouTube, right? Always, everything will be uploaded, even this office hour, since I was doing some content, I'll upload that to YouTube also. All right, thank you. All righty. Uh, Christopher, quick question before I stop. Nope. All right, I will uh, hopefully see you guys tomorrow.